um, when you, whenever you take the square root of something, you must include both the positive and the negative values. So x in this case could be positive or negative 5. Now the second one here, um, I asked you to set the equation equal to 0 and write in standard form. So that means all this stuff needs to be on one side. Uh, we need to move that 3x squared to the right side. Uh, and to put it in standard form, I'm going to change the order here. Um, and then there's one more thing that we need to do. We need to subtract the x as well. So 4x squared. Oh. 4x squared plus 2x minus 5 is equal to 0. I apologize. Okay? <clears throat> um, so that will come into play on Monday. We're going to deal with the square root stuff uh, today because there are some quadratic equations that we don't have to factor. We can solve them just by using square roots. So let's look at some examples of that. So being able to solve quadratic equations by taking square roots. Okay, uh, conditions, okay, the condition is that the quadratic term, the x squared, can be your only variable, okay, there cannot be a linear term, and when I say linear term, I'm referring to a term that has just x as opposed to x squared, okay, if the only variable that shows up in your equation is x squared, you can solve by taking square roots, and what we're going to do is we're just going to get x by itself, so for this first example, 8x squared plus 3 is equal to 11, we need to do whatever we can do to isolate that variable. We're trying to get x by itself right here. So we're going to start by subtracting 3. So we've got 8x squared is equal to 8. And then we are going to divide both sides by 8. We get that x squared is equal to 1. Our final step is to take the square root of both sides. You cannot forget the positive and the negative. Okay, let's look at example two. Six minus four b squared is equal to negative two hundred and seventy-four. So we need to start by subtracting six from both sides. So we get negative four b squared is equal to negative two eighty. Divide both sides by negative 4. B squared is equal to 70. 70 is not a perfect square, but that's okay. We will just write it as plus or minus square root of 70. Okay, two more examples, and that's all I want to do with this today. Okay. Um, 49b squared plus 4 is equal to 8. Move the 4. Divide by 49. b squared is equal to 4 over 49. That is not, that's a fraction. Uh, it doesn't simplify. When we take the square root of both sides, don't forget the plus or the minus. Um, and when you take the square root of something like that, of a fraction, you can take the square root of the top, so that's 2, and you can take the square root of the bottom, that's 7. So plus or minus 2 over 7 is our answer. And then the last one here, add 5, or p squared is equal to 324 divide by 4. I think, I don't think that the, yeah, that's evenly divisible. What is it? 324 divided by 4, 81? Is that 81? Equal to 81. Take the square root of both sides. So P is plus or minus 9. So, a couple of things. Quadratic term is the only thing that can be there. Okay, no linear term. When you take the square root, don't forget the plus or minus. If it's not a perfect square, just leave it under the square root. Uh, if you're taking the square root of a fraction and those are perfect squares, you can take the square root of both pieces. And that's about it. Okay? Now, 
Now, these are equations. Okay, remember equations, you can always check your answer. Right? Equations, all you have to do is go back to the original and plug it in. So let me use, I don't know, let me use this last example as um, uh, evidence of that. Okay, 4 times P. I'm going to check the negative solution. Okay, anytime you plug in a negative number and you're going to square it, you must put it in parentheses. You must put it in parentheses. If you do not, then your calculator will stick a negative where it does not belong. Okay? Uh, or where you don't need to. 